Wren's Correctional Center in Cedar City, Missouri, where judges sent convicted murderers Lisa Harris and Marty Greer to spend the rest of their lives. But the two 21-year-old convicts had other plans. About 4.15 on Thursday, the two inmates made it over this fenced area leading into recreation and proceeded back into this corner where they got into a blind spot and cut the perimeter fence. I believe that they saw our weakest link, an area that was not detected by the motion system, and they took advantage of it. During a bed check four hours later, guards discovered the women were gone. Officials searched a 25-mile stretch of forest north of the prison, but this country is good cover for fugitives on the run. Once there is an escape, it is difficult to locate these people because there is a rough terrain area around here. There's a lot of woods, a lot of uh, valleys that they can get in. Law enforcement does want these two women caught. People in the small town of Neosha, Missouri, remember Lisa Harris as the cold-blooded murderess who led a gang of teens into this house and orchestrated what police call a savage killing frenzy. Harris said she wanted to avenge the alleged and unreported rape of her best friend and co-defendant, Jennifer Fair. People, everybody involved in the case was under the influence of hallucinogenic mushrooms, what they call magic mushrooms. And uh, I think that there was no realm of reality. Everything just got chaotic. It was a very brutal homicide in the fact that he fought for his life once he saw what was happening and fought through several rooms of the house and blood was on all the walls of the house and finally ended up in the dining room where he was beaten to death with a claw hammer and clubs and stabbed many times after he was dead. In October of 1987, Harris was convicted of first-degree murder in the beating death of John Hill. She was sentenced to life in prison without parole, the youngest woman in the history of Missouri to receive such a strong sentence. Although left behind to serve her life sentence, Fair rejoiced in the Harris escape. I am so happy. I am so happy for her. I have cried so many tears of joy because this is not a menace to society. She's not dangerous. She's never had any prior convictions. She's nonviolent. She's no longer into drugs. And I'm happy for her. She, I hope she makes it forever. I hope I never see her again. Well, they may look uh, very uh, sweet and demure on the outside, but the fact is that's how they appeared to John Hill the night of the homicide. I consider her extremely dangerous and I think very desperate at this point. This um, being the most infamous case in our county's history, we would uh, continue to search for and, and uh, attempt to apprehend Lisa Harris if it took the next 20 years. Deputies believe both women may be hiding out near their Missouri hometowns. Greer may be in the area of Sykeston and Harris, Neosho. Lisa Dawn Harris is 21, but she looks much younger and she's very thin. She's also soft-spoken and articulate. She's a fan of heavy metal rock groups, and there's a tattoo of the word here, H-E-A-R, on her left forearm. If you know the whereabouts of Lisa Dawn Harris, call us at 1-800-CRIME-91. Marty Greer shot her boyfriend to death. She's a heavy-set woman who drinks at least a six-pack of Pepsi a day. She's a trained nurse's aide and a music fanatic. There's a tattoo of the letters L-A-T on her right shoulder and two tattoos on her hands. If you've seen Marty Greer, we want to hear from you. The number is 1-800-CRIME-91. Authorities say both women are extremely dangerous, so if you run across either one of them, don't take any chances.